So Barry, thanks for coming along today and still strange times. What what have the last six, seven months been for you without Solly or Moors? Um, well, I've managed to stay at the divorce courts, being at home every weekend. Uh, I think my wife's sort of finding it a little difficult and particularly she was looking forward to October the 3rd and then when I gave her the, the good news that I'd be sparing, sharing another Saturday with her, she was underwhelmed, shall we say. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, as you say, interesting times and it'd be great to actually get back to see some uh, live football at some point. It was strange, wasn't it, the, the last game against Fylde? Because although we've, we knew coronavirus was around, we didn't think that would be the last, the last we'd see in Lemoors for, well, now until... <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have interesting memories of that because um, it was a tr because when we go to Fylde in the past, we always made a trip up to Blackpool beforehand. So it's a great day out for, as, for supporters, association, away travel, and um, the game was pretty uh, hard work. You know, we, we it was a poor pitch, and we should have beaten the poor team, um, but we huffed and puffed and okay we got away with 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 a draw but i felt frustrated and i think you know what let's get away that game let's get let's get next week's game on was it harrogate's time wasn't it on the friday night i said right let's get back to, to winning ways there um so it was a real sad end to the season from my perspective that uh, we didn't even finish on a high um as, as a from a performance perspective so really keen to actually see uh, what the team can actually do this season um and hopefully uh, bigger and better things. Whilst we're on the subject of, of the team, obviously mm. quite a few players left, didn't they? Were there any any standouts you thought you know you were sad to see go? Yeah, I thought there's some really uh, hard-working players that um, had really sort of uh, you know it was a loss. But I just I realised that. Um, there were decisions needed to be made, whether it was sort of um, moving the, the, the squad forward or whether it was financial issues. But um, I felt that generally, you know, all of the players that w we lost um, were players that, that were giving their all for the club generally. So it was um, it was sad, but a, a sad fact of the times, really. So we have to move on. Um, but we look now to have uh, signed. Um, a number of good players and uh, hopefully they can uh, wear the yellow and blue proudly. I know it's difficult for you to answer this question because of not obviously not been able to see the game so far but mm. any, does anyone you know catch your eye out of the, the summer signings? Um, Joe Sabara I think uh, I like the look of uh, he looked he showed some potential when he was there and he, he seemed to have all the right touches and uh, he seems to have uh, from what I've picked up from your reports and uh, the snippets of uh, been able to, to see of the games then um, he looks like he could be uh, an exciting prospect and he, if him and Jamie Osborne can click together then uh, it could look pretty good I think yeah I 100% agree with that yeah. and I guess onto the the topic of today with the season mm -hmm. two three days away mm -hmm. awaiting the the government decision but we're hoping it will be all get the green light and mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to seeing the team in action now? Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I can't wait for Saturday now. It's, it's, it's a strange one, and we're, where's the supporters association are uh, trying to build up the um, the enthusiasm ready for the season? But it's it's like no other situation. But I think come Saturday morning, regardless of whether we're actually physically there, I think the um, when we start seeing your sort of um, outputs. Um, arriving at the ground and that sort of thing we'll be there and it'll be uh, f we'll be there cheering on the lads so uh, yeah it'll uh, it'll all click into place hopefully and then um, I think next Tuesday is going to be hard not being able to come down here and um, and support the team particularly in a big game against Wrexham uh, um, and just hope you know that we can uh, get off to a flyer really. Well what we want to do as the club is We'll have the live streaming in in process, and mm -hmm. all the fans can watch from the comfort of their own home. I guess yeah. not quite the same as a match day experience. So, what do you think the Solly and Moors fans could do to maybe alter their I don't know waking up for a match day? What will there be any differences to to how the, you approach your day? Um, interesting question, really. Yeah, I suppose it, the um, many people have match day sort of routines and rituals because I think. Uh, a lot of football fans and footballers in general are sort of superstitious about what they actually do um, in a lead up to a match. So perhaps we should encourage everyone to do their regular thing. Um, it's a away game, it's at Woking, so 
hmm, does mean I'd have to get up early on Saturday morning to, to, to be uh, ready to get down to the drum and monkey on time to catch the coach, which would uh, be there, but uh, wouldn't be as bad as when we went to um, Scotland last year at four o'clock in the morning, but there we go. But uh, yeah, so I think let's, let's suggest that people try and do the match day ri ritual of uh, doing the normal things and uh, get the colours on, sit there and if the team know we're all there behind them and we're all there screaming at the, 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 the uh, encouragement at the uh, at the TV screens, etc., then uh, hopefully they can feel that sort of positive vibe from us. The other weird thing that I've just thought of is we're in October. We'll be in October by the time Saturday comes as well. So mm -hmm. two months after the season would have mm -hmm. started in normal circumstances. So. It's not going to be a you know nice summer's day for the lads, is it really? Exactly. Well, just looking outside now, the the weather certainly has turned. It's it's definitely football weather, isn't it? It's a bit chilly and it's yeah. damp, and it's uh, it's probably better for for footballers. Um, they don't only play in hot, steamy conditions where they have to have drinks breaks every five minutes. This is proper footballing weather, so let's let's get it on yeah. now and uh, and and you know let's 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 do it. If I remember rightly, last year it was. I think it was 30 degrees, wasn't it, at Woking? It was a hot day, not the result we wanted, so this time around. Yeah, it all went wrong. We had a cracking start to the season. Um, we'd been away at Chorley, was it 5 6 1 or whatever? Six, one, yeah. yeah, and, um, and we'd, we'd had a they real were good start. Them, weren't we? Yes, and um, we had a sloppy goal within the first 15 minutes or so, I think, and, uh, and it all went downhill. By half time, we were struggling, and uh, yeah, it was, it was, and of course, Woking fans are fairly passionate, as all football fans are, but it's, there's, there's no segregation there, so it's quite close and, I wouldn't say intimidating, but uh, it, it's a, a close um, affair, so we're having to take um, all of their sort of uh, criticism of our poor performance as, uh, as what we thought we were a good team and we were on the back of what we'd done the previous year, so yeah, we owe them one, I think, and so uh, It'd be great if we can come out the blocks um, quickly and after last Saturday's um, win at, um, at, here at, against Leamington, I think that set the, the, the team up well for the, for, the, for the first game. As a fan, do you look at pre-season results and judge the team going into the season or is it all about Woking now on Saturday? I try not to, but in, invariably you do look to see what, what the individual performances are and what the, the, how the team are playing and how they're evolving and clearly again from the small snippets I've seen um, for, throughout the um, season you can see that, that things are that Jimmy Shan has, has actually put in um, some new philosophies and you can see the players are starting to warm to that and, and understand what's needed and, and some of the passing and movement looked, uh, looked pretty good and so I think if we can play to strengths and we certainly have the, um, the skillful players from what I can see um, now in, in, the, in the squad so therefore there's no reason why we uh, we can't actually um, sort of hit the, hit the ground running really and I think um, and that's what we need to do um, because tough game again on, on Tuesday night although against um, against solely all old boys isn't it I think oh sorry it's Wrexham <laughs> but um, <coughs> That'll be an interesting one, and there'll be a lot of motivation from uh, a number of their players to actually uh, prove, and particularly as they've just uh, had some big investments, so they'll be wanting to. Uh, Three of our old players as well, there. Exactly, there's the old players, and there's the. Uh, they're, they're, they've got investments, so they'll be, as a club, we'll be wanting to, to show what they can do because they uh, have underperformed um, over the last couple of years, so that'll be a tough one. So we need to get something out of this week, and uh, <clears throat> the. Um, the Solio Moors Fans Forum uh, does a, a prediction league, uh, I don't know if how many people are aware of that, but, but uh, that runs throughout the season. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that, that's quite good, so you have to predict the results. And normally it's crowds who can get the news crowd, but obviously that's going to prove difficult this year. So I think what they're doing is um, uh, who's going to be the first solely all goal scorer and, and a time, and you'll get various points for that. So my prediction for Saturday um, is the 2 1 away win for. Um, for the Moors and uh, I reckon Sabara within 16 minutes so if we can get that one right that means I get I'll, I get off to the season as a flyer um, and I'll be I'll be a doubly happy chap with that that'd be the perfect start wouldn't it a goal after a, you know yeah 15, 16 minutes and I think I think the fans will be pleasantly surprised with the way the team is shaping up and the mm -hmm. Jimmy's style of play it's, 
different to maybe what we've seen before and mm -hmm. I think on the eye it's going to be a lot more attractive. Um, just moving away from back to the supporters, mm -hmm. how are you going to be spending Saturday afternoon? Um, well, hopefully, if there's a, if there's a stream of the game from from Woking, I'll be there. If not, I'll uh, try and find a radio commentary. But of course, I'll have um, the excellent uh, Twitter feed coming through, keeping me up to date. And so that's uh, that's that's something. And then uh, I think. I'm hoping for a positive result because I'm looking. I'm doing things in slight reverse. I'm going to go down the pub after the game and uh, hopefully have a couple of celebrationary beers. But um, but yeah, certainly there um, with the collars on, cheering on the team and um, yeah. Brilliant. And you spoke to a few fans, I guess, over the the lockdown period and the last mm. few weeks. What what's the mood around the supporters? Obviously, disappointed not to be coming to the games, but mm -hmm. still excited about a new season. Yep, I, from, from what we've been picking up via um, via our Twitter and, and Facebook feeds uh, are that uh, they're really engaging and, and they're encouraged by the, the types of players and everyone would always have their views on what players, you know, that I think if we had a, player, a squad of 100 they'd still probably be saying well we need someone here and we need someone there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I, as I say, I think we've, we've we appear to have bought well. You know, yeah. we'll hopefully see the evidence of that over the over the coming weeks. But um, and and if the club are able with with the, you know with the difficult situation we're in, if we need to, to strengthen in any particular position, then hopefully we can go out and do that because I'm sure um, we can attract the players because Solio Moors are uh, are now an, an attractive team. Yeah. And you wouldn't have heard us say that five six years ago in terms of uh, a proposition for players to want to come to so um, if we're able to do so and we need to strengthen let's do so and uh, let's face it with the new um, new home kit predominantly yellow and blue yeah. it's back to those glory days of uh, of champions of the National League North and um, so as far as I'm concerned you know everything's in place we've got a good a good squad which if it needs improving let's do so but we've got the the, the right colours to uh, we, and let's get out of this league and become a, a, a league team. You've uh, preempted my next question there with the, the kit. Mm -hmm. Recent news obviously the away kit got launched first, um, Solio Borough angle to it. Yeah. Uh, just thoughts on that first of all? I have to say, excellent promotion in terms of listening to Trevor Steen's emotive words about the, the borough and etc. As a, an ex Borough fan, then I was delighted to, to, to see the, uh, the the red and white return. And obviously, it's 20 years since uh, since the club finally found their new permanent home here after being sort of travellers for was it 11 years or so? I think it was. Um, so um, it, it's it's good and, and it's good to see that the club do. Um, recognize there's a past and how that yep. can be brought forward and yeah next year i understand that the the, the, uh, the intention is to actually um, celebrate the more green colors as well as yeah, as part of the, plan, the, yeah. the kit so uh, so you yeah, know hopefully it'll encourage um both parts of that we, we are one team now but 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 it's good always good to look back and, and remember the um the good times in the, in the past as yeah. well i know we get a lot of comments from them opposing clubs are you've only been around since 2007 mm -hmm. but there's a lot of history isn't there not just from borough but more green and sure. it all merges into one and yeah the club's got a history dating back to obviously the early 1900s sure um yeah and i think it's important and and, we, and yeah we can take the um, the criticism but you have to take the positive out of that as well yes we we've been a long time coming um, both teams had their um, ups and downs um, and we were uh, as two clubs brave enough to actually come together to actually um, to, to, to form which has, has turned out to be a really strong unit and uh, and from my perspective really sort of promotes the, the borough of Solihull um, because it's put Solihull on the map in more ways than even perhaps our ne near neighbours at Land Rover in, uh, in terms, in certainly terms of football. Um, so um, yeah, it, it, it's it's great, and I think we should take pride in, in that being brave in that decision and moving forward. And now we should celebrate the future, um, but not forget that yeah, there were two teams that uh, that built the, uh, the the sound foundations for that. Hundred yeah. percent, and just touching on the home kit, obviously. 
I don't think anyone's going to uh, miss us in that striking yellow shirt, are they? And we've got plenty of youth and junior sides out there. The women wore it last night in their derby mm. victory. Yeah. I think going back to yellow, I think Solly and Moore supporters can really you know, resonate with, with the colour. Yeah, if I recall correctly, I think it was the, 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 the colours yellow and blue originally came about because uh, um, not long after the, the formation of the, of the Moors, the, um, there was an away kit in yellow and blue and I think the, um, the fans found it so uh, striking and uh, popular that they pressed the club and hence that became their uh, first team colours and uh, onwards and upwards so it's great to actually get back to that um, people say oh yeah it's it's you know we should we should go for for the more blue a bit there. but as far as i'm concerned and i think people with that original idea in mind we're a yellow and blue team yeah. so it's actually great and as you say and it's great to actually see all of the teams now juniors and uh, the women's teams etc and you, and you see the the pictures being uh, coming through on uh, on social media of all the, all the all the youngsters proudly wearing their kit already and it's great that we've been able to roll it out sort of day one to them all and and they look so pleased and so smart <laughs> um, and yeah there's no uh, no reason why we shouldn't be able to find a, uh, our, our uh, players on the pitch when yeah. <laughs> in those rather vivid kits, which is it's fantastic. And let's hope that it proves really popular. And what it would be great that uh, on a Saturday morning when people haven't unfortunately got anywhere to go, if they're in Solihull, Hall, in Touchwood or wherever, and, all, and you sort of have to put your sunglasses on because there's just a vision of yellow and blue around, around the town. And that's what we want to see because that's... That comes with uh, with time. I understand that you know, like we talked about Wrexham earlier. If you go to Wrexham, it's a, it's a it's a, a town street with history. We're we're, we're getting there, and I think um, it'd be great if we could um, see that locally, yeah. and hopefully uh, more local people and embrace uh, what Solio Moors are all about. Absolutely, and we'd encourage supporters to you know if they can manage to get their shirt in time for Saturday to really encourage mm -hmm. to wear at home to wear around. Solly Hall, maybe mm -hmm. even to work, you never know. Mm -hmm. But just touching on um, the supporters club, disappointing that you can't get to games at the moment. Yeah. It's a real shame because obviously the backing, you know, hugely helps the team. Um, you've got a few more initiatives this season with the membership, haven't you? Yeah, so we, 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 took, a, we took a decision um, to say that um, we weren't going to um, charge for, for um for, for our subscription for this year. I mean, we, I think we're fairly comp uh, competitive anyway. Eight pounds a year at tops, and then with, with reductions down to five and three pounds for concessions. So you can hardly say that we're, uh, we're t you know, we're sort of um, overcharging. So, but we said well, it's not fair. There's, there's people have have had difficulties. They've had to take financial cuts or whatever this year, and we just felt it was the appropriate thing to actually do uh, as a responsible community organisation, you know, embracing the, 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 uh, the more sort of vision of, of being sort of uh, an important part of the community. Um, and so that, that has been really well received. Um, and so we've tried to freshen things up and we've, um, we, we're going to have, rather than just a, small monthly draws, we decided to go for some uh, quarterly mega draws yeah. and, uh, and, and we'll have some, uh, hopefully some exclusive uh, prizes um, that we can sort of do. Um, we've got, I've just taken receipt of the, uh, of the first prize, which I won't sort of uh, give any clues out to us yet, but hopefully it'll be um, well received because it's going to be a collector's item, I believe, uh, in the future. So, um, yeah, watch this space in terms of uh, what we can do for the club. We're really sad that we, you know, we can't be there on a Saturday, whether it's here at, at home or travelling across the country um, supporting the team. And because it, it's great because um, but they're fans, but they're friends as well. You know, we we we're a, we're a small, tight knit uh, community of, of fans. Uh, uh, okay, and our fan base has grown. It's fantastic to see the record numbers of um, season tickets that we've that the club has sold this year. But um, we're still a fairly tight, quick kit community, and we all know um, we all know each other, and we, we we watch out for each other, and we look after. And it's great to to meet up with people. And it's going to be. Um, it can be difficult, I say, sitting at home on a Saturday on your own watching the game. But I think if you spiritually know that, you know, all your mates are out there cheering on and probably 
commenting, uh, commentating on the, the game in the way that they would normally and you can, you can almost probably visualise who will be saying what at any particular moment so uh, yeah and hopefully soon we can, we can all get back together again uh, uh, when circumstances allow and, uh, and we can you know really make some uh, serious noise which hopefully because we haven't been down, we haven't been down here for a long time. Um, will generate a much more um, vocal atmosphere. Because uh, you know, if I'm honest, I think we, we probably could do better at home as a, as a, as a, um, as a home support. We, we've the the regular 50, 60 or so away fans can make more noise than the away um, than the home fans when we're away. But we seem a little bit more reticent at home, and I think. Um, if they, uh, you know, once we get back there, I think we'll be so, there'll be so much relief and uh, so much excitement. That could probably work for our benefit. So we've got to try and take the positive yeah. out, I think, really. Yeah, no, you make a good point. And without getting too political, I mean, what's the difference between us hosting the game with, with fans and, you know, mm -hmm. leagues below that are still getting five, 600 fans in? Um, the day that we can actually do that, it's going to be another great day, isn't it? And one to really look forward to and cherish. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure... There must be good reasons. I, I, I can't find them, but you know, the elite, non-elite, um, you know, and, Saturday, and looking at Saturday's FA Cup games, it's to a non-scientist like me, it's a bit, a bit weird that you know, uh, a non-elite team, as, as they're called, below the the National League uh, setup, uh, can actually have fans. But if a, a National League team is visiting them, then they can't play there. So uh, it's all a bit. Uh, Bit of a weird one, really. I think, uh, hope, well, just hopefully soon we can all get through this and we can get back to some sort of normality where we actually um, enjoy the, uh, the, you know, the camaraderie of a Saturday afternoon and, uh, and, and being able to do what we all want to do. Stand out in the cold, freezing, wrapped up well, but we're supporting Sally Moors. Well, Barry, thanks for the time today. We'll do our very best on Saturday to keep yeah. the fans engaged. Yeah. And we, we hope that you know fans can uh, interact on social media and let's hope for three points. Yeah, thanks very much. And uh, yeah, be assured that um, Jimmy and all the rest of the team that will be there virtually cheering on the team and, and hopefully you, you know you can bring home the three points for us. Perfect. Cheers, Barry. Cheers.